Can you talk a little bit about why we are so tied to nitro relieving chest pain and escalating nitro and whether or not there's any data that supports nitro in terms of morbidity or mortality benefit? So uh, nitro is partially drilled into us because of Mona. So morphine, oxygen, nitro, and aspirin. They beat it into every med student. We can't quite forget it. We always forget that the only one of those that really does anything is aspirin, which is amazing. And the other stuff is just frosting on the cake. Um, so morphine relieves the pain, like Larry said, but it also hides a whole bunch of other stuff that you should probably have paid attention to. Oxygen is probably bad for you after you get over 95% O2 sats. So do not jack these folks up to you know, PAO2s at 300 because you thought they were having ACS. That's probably actively bad and has been shown to increase in FARC size. So you're wanting a sat of at least 95%, but that's it. And then nitro. Well, not all nitro is going to fix all chest pain, folks. And I have had folks that were kind of borderline blood pressures that have actually gotten kind of hypotensive if you go on these upper sides of nitro drips. I don't think that that safety is there, unlike the flash pulmonary edema guy that you can pretty safely put on the 400 mics or 1,000 mics a minute. Those jokers come in with systolic blood pressures in like the 200 and somethings, and you got loads of safety. That guy having a heart attack with a blood pressure of 300, be a little cautious about getting really high on those nitro drips because they, they can get shocky in some cases, especially if they've got right ventricular involvement. So it hasn't been shown to increase, improve mortality or morbidity at all. It's something that gets their pain better, but it's not even a good diagnostic tool. And we, we do have an X, but Larry, real quick. Larry beat the X. Hey, so uh, like a couple years ago, I looked at the nitroglycerin, I looked at the nitroglycerin uh, issue uh, for this very reason, and I came away feeling that while the evidence isn't great, that there, there definitely was more, it was weighted clearly more on the nitro, you know, something positive about nitroglycerin. So I'm a big supporter on that. The other question that I wanted to just address was the thing about the, um, getting your diagnosis right um, and not anchoring too fast because the last issue of MRAP, uh, they talked about that uh, article where they were trying to get their door to balloon time down to 61 minutes and they found that uh, while they were down to 61 minutes, they were doing a lot more uh, negative casts and, that, and the morbidity and mortality associated with the guys that actually ended up getting the, the casts that did not have uh, an, uh, an ACS event was actually like went up like to 15 percent from five to i think the numbers may be off but five to 15 percent so they went back and said hey you need to uh, be careful not to anchor too soon and to uh, think through your differential before you send someone straight to the cath lab because basically up in the cath lab all they're thinking about is basically uh it says ACS, yes, ACS, no. And so they're not thinking about the uh, uh, thoracic uh, a aortic aneurysm or, you know, or dissection. They're not thinking about the PE, and those patients die. All right. Thanks, Larry. Next question.